Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to export an Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine and then also how to import it. And the reason you might want to do this is let's say you want to export it so you can actually import it into another installation of VirtualBox on a different computer or send to somebody else. Or if maybe you want to import it into another platform such as a VMware Workstation, which we might have a video for coming up, so keep your eyes out for that. So what you want to do is you want to open your VirtualBox manager. You could either pick the virtual machine you want to export, you could right click on it and then click on export to OCI, or you could go to your tools, go to export, and then you could pick it from the list here. It does the same thing. So we're going to do this Windows 10 new. And there's a couple ways you could do it. There's the guided mode and the export mode. So the guided mode is kind of like a you know, easier way to do it if you're not sure, if you don't want to kind of customize your settings, but I always like to use the expert mode so I have full control over it. Okay, so we got W10 new, and here's the name. And if you want to edit some of these, this information, like, uh, you know, vendor we could put Microsoft, uh, da, 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 version Windows 10, and like this license thing is kind of interesting, so you probably don't need to use this, but I'll show you what it does when we import it. So um, if we click on edit, this is not a license key, like you know the, the key code for the operating system. So we'll get to that when we import it. You'll see how that works. And let's say for the name, we're going to call it import imported VM. All right, so now here is where you have a couple options here if you want to use the make it an OVA or OVF. So if you were to do an OVF, you're going to have, you know, it's going to break it down into several different files. And if you do an OVA, it's going to make it into one file. So you want to do an OVA if you want to import it into uh, VMware, for example. So that's what we're going to do. And we will stick with their default just for fun there. Okay, so here's where it's going to put it. It's going to put in my doggings by default. I'm going to move it to a different location because I don't keep my virtual machines there. So I have my virtual machine. I'm going to put it in this imported file folder here. Click on save. And then here you have some choices for the MAC addresses that are assigned to your network cards. You could either have it take every all the MAC addresses out so, so if you're going to be importing this into the same environment, you might want to you know, strip this out so you don't have any MAC address conflicts. And then there's also the option to just include the NAT adapters or include all adapters. So I'm going to leave this on the default for fun here. And then if you have an ISO image file, like for the um, operating system, you could have that included as well. I'm going to leave that off just to save some time here. Okay, so now I'm going to click on Export. And now this is going to take quite a bit of time, depending on how big your disks are and how many disks you have and that kind of thing. So I'll pause the video and then be back when that's done. All right, so the export is done. took about 20 minutes. And so you just got to get back to this main screen here. So if I go to my uh, imported file, which now I realize I should have named exported either way. So there's my W10 new file that I'm now going to import back into VirtualBox. So to do that, same area from the tools menu here, just go to import. And you have the guided mode and the expert mode again. There we go. So the source, if you use an Oracle Cloud infrastructure, you could pull your file from there, but I'm using off my hard drive. So I'm going to pick a local file system, browse to where it is. VMs imported so there it is and so now once you're here you could change the name of it so i'm going to leave it as imported vm just for demonstration here's some of the information i put in here it knows the operating system you could actually change if you want to um, edit some of the hardware information you could do that before you import it and if you want to leave your attached devices here or, or take them off you could do so here and then here's where you it's going to import it into i'm going to change that as well So I'll just put it 
back in the same folder here. Okay, and then you have this option too for your MAC address policy. And you want to do this too. You want your hard drives as VDI files, obviously. And so we're going to click on import. And here's that part I was talking about before about the agreement. So this comes in handy, you know, if you have a VM that you want somebody to import, you want them to agree to some terms. You could do that. So I agree to that. And now we're going to let that import and we'll be back when that's done. Okay, so now the import is complete. Didn't take as long as the export. And now we have our imported VM here. And then we could go click on the settings for that VM and you know, make sure everything's the way it should be and so on. And then if we click on start, it should fire up and be good to go. Yep, so it's trying to boot from the ISO file. And there we go, right into Windows. All right, simple as that. So once again, just you could just right-click on the VM you want to uh, export, or you could go to the Tools menu and do it from here. Export it, import it, you pick all your settings, and you should be good to go. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.